Got some past exam questions here for the year 12 inorganic qualitative analysis topic. So as always, the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So download the questions, have a go, and then play them when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so the first question, we've got to process the results of these three tests and decide which is the unknown compound. So test one, they've heated it with uh, sodium hydroxide, a pungent swelling gas evolves, which turns red litmus paper blue. So that's telling you that it contains ammonium ions. Test two, they've added silver nitrate solution, white precipitate forms, which is soluble in dilute aqueous ammonia. So it tells you it contains chloride ions. Test three, they've added sodium carbonate solution and there's no visible reaction. There's no bubbles, basically. And that means it's not an acid, so it doesn't contain H plus ions. So the compound is ammonium chloride, so it's option B. Question two, big eight mark planning question where you've got to plan out a series of tests the student can perform to establish which one was sodium carbonate, which one was sodium chloride, and which one was sodium sulfate. So we've got to include the order they should be carried out with a little explanation and then the, the tests with the observations and the ionic equations. So we'll start with the order, the test order. I've got this acronym CASH that I use to um, get the order right. So it's carbonate first, then sulfate, then halide. So there's the order and obviously that's gonna score you a mark. The reason for that, if the sulfate test was carried out first, the barium ions that you add to test for the sulfate ions they can also react with carbonate ions. So that would give a precipitate of barium carbonate and obviously that would lead you to think that it was a sulfate, whereas in fact it's a carbonate, so it's like a false positive. If you carry out the halide test first, the carbonate and the sulfate would react with the silver ions to make precipitates of silver carbonate and silver sulfate. So again, you're going to get false positives. So you're gonna think it's some kind of halide whereas in fact it's either a carbonate or a sulfate. So it's the cash order that you need to do them in. So then all we're doing now is just running through the separate tests and then we're going to give the observation and the ionic equation. So obviously the first test you would do would be on all three. So I'm saying add dilute nitric acid to all three. The one that fizzes, only one should fizz because there's only one carbonate in there. So the one that fizzes is the carbonate, and there's the ionic equation. Don't forget your state symbols for your ionic equations. So that would be ruled out. Then you're down to two unknowns. So you'd add the um, barium nitrate. So the source of barium ions is the barium nitrate solution to test for the sulfate. The one that makes a white precipitate is obviously the sulfate, and there's the ionic equation for that precipitation reaction. And then finally, the test for the chloride, so you've got one sample left, you'd add silver nitrate solution, and that should make um, a white precipitate, which confirms the presence of the chloride, and there's the ionic equation for that. Now, we're already on eight marks here, but if you wanted to add to this um, a little bit of extra detail, like we said in test two, up here in the multiple choice question, you could um, add dilute aqueous ammonia to the white precipitate, and the silver chloride produced would dissolve. Question three, so lots of little one mark questions now. So state the reagent the student would need to add to the solution of calcium iodide, silver nitrate solution. What observation would show that the solution contained iodide ions, yellow precipitate. There's the ion equation for that reaction. And then I suppose the tricky bit of this question the students provided with aqueous solution of calcium bromide contaminated with iodide, calcium iodide. The student carries out the same chemical test, but this time needs to add a second reagent to show that iodide ions are present. So the reagent that they should add is concentrated aqueous ammonia. And that's because the silver bromide dissolves in concentrated aqueous ammonia, but the silver iodide is insoluble in it. If you add dilute aqueous ammonia, neither of them would dissolve, so you wouldn't be any further forward. So it's concentrated aqueous ammonia. First part of question four, the type of reaction that takes place when silver ions are added to uh, test for chloride ions, precipitation reaction, and the ionic equation for the formation of silver chloride 
It's that one there. Okay, so we've got a potentially tricky calculation in question five. So students given a sample of an unknown group two chloride. I've just written up there that the formula, the sort of generic formula for that would be XCl2. And they've done these three things here. I always like to make these little diagrams just to try and visualize what's happening. So they've added 2.86 grams of the group two chloride, dissolved it in water. Obviously that's generated the separate aqueous ions. They've added an excess of silver nitrate solution and it's produced that white precipitate of silver chloride. And we know the mass of that is 8.604 grams. Nice easy start of the question. Calculate the moles of silver chloride that's forming. So mass over MR and they give you the MR 0.06. Second part of the question, we've got to establish what the group two metal is in this chloride. Um, and we've got to give the relative atomic mass to one decimal place. Right, so I've got this little sort of flow chart here on the left hand side. So if I just run through uh, the stuff in black first and then we'll, we'll talk about the numbers. So remember, the first thing they've done is they've taken XCl2 solid, they've put it in some water and that's created the separate aqueous ions. And then to these ions, I've sort of colour coded them because they're the, essentially the same thing. To these ions, they've added silver nitrate solution to create the precipitate. So we calculated here that there was 0.06 moles of silver chloride. So from the ratio in this, this lower equation here, there must also have been 0.06 moles of chloride ions present in that beaker. They are those ions, so they're the same number. Okay, so there's 0.06 moles of chloride ions generated when the XCl2 is dissolved. And then if we apply the ratio back, that means there's 0.03 moles of XCl2 has been dissolved. So the first mark would be scored for establishing that the moles of XCl2 is 0.03. We can get the MR for XCl2 now, mass over moles, 95.3. Subtract the 71 for the two chloride ions. So that leaves you with an MR to one decimal place for the metal of 24.3. It's in group two. So it's got to be magnesium. The important thing to note here is that the mole ratio, I've got it written here, you can't apply a mole ratio across two separate equations. Now what I sometimes see as a teacher, if, you know, if I'm marking this question, I would see the classic mistake of a student would quite correctly calculate the moles of that, that establish the one-to-one -one ratio and go on 0.06 moles of that, but then what they do is they double going into that equation. Well, that, that mole ratio in that equation has got nothing to do with this equation. They are the same thing. So last page now, we've got the students working together in groups to identify four different solutions. Each solution contains one of the following compounds. First test carried out is the ammonium ion test. It's kind of already been uh, explained this one in the very first multiple choice question, but here it is again. So what do you do? You add sodium hydroxide solution and warm gently. Test the gas produced with damp red litmus paper. The litmus paper should turn blue. And there's the ionic equation for that reaction. And it's this ammonia gas that causes that litmus paper to go blue. And then part B, the student added aqueous silver nitrate solution to test for the halide ions on the remaining three solutions. So the remaining three solutions are the sodium sulfate, the sodium chloride, and the potassium iodide. State the expected observations or write the ion equations for any reactions that take place. So because we've got a sulfate present, now that will give a false positive when it reacts with silver nitrate solution. So the sodium sulfate will give a white precipitate of silver sulfate, and there's the ion equation for that. Sodium chloride would give a white precipitate of silver chloride as the ion equation for that. So marks wise, you'd need that statement and the ion equation. And likewise, the potassium iodide would give a yellow precipitate of silver iodide. And there's the ion equation for that. Both of these statements for the mark.